Here's a test of the, I, the first IF transformer in the Hammerland radio. The test setup I'm using is just a regular tube type AM table radio and that's substituting in for the entire IF and audio stage in the Hammerland. I've got this hooked up to the isolation transformer. This would be very dangerous to do without it because you could cause a short across the power line by connecting the chassis of the Hammerland in this and it and also would be a, a shock hazard. So in order to hook up a transformerless radio chassis to any other external equipment you need the isolation transformer. And this is the first IF here. I've got it powered up and it's actually got two IF transformers in one can and it's got some real mica capacitors in there not just those little sheets of mica with the little clips but it's got actual mica capacitors inside it would be nice if other manufacturers would have done that but of course there's still some bad caps in here because we're still getting uh, we're still getting that noise see if I turn up the audio of the Hammerland it's still got noise in it but you can hear on the Portable or on the table radio uh, here. On your plan because It'll give it some uh, more RF really based on the idea. We've got to change your thinking so that we can change your. You'll notice I can tune in a station a on the hammerland. Resolution.com. We don't get many second chances. This one could save your life. A TIA or transient ischemic stroke is a mini stroke. Symptoms usually go away within 24 hours and you feel fine. Fill all those that you have a person who's going to be productive. Uh, they're going to be a better parent. They're going to be a better uh, spouse. They're going to be a better employee. And obviously, they're going to be a better Catholic or a better Christian in the world. Or now get the all new Dodge Durango with a five year, 100,000 mile warranty. Now this isn't going to have nearly the sensitivity that the actual Hammerland setup would because it's this is not precisely aligned with the Hammerland's IF and it's it doesn't have any more IF stages active than the table radio would. It's going right out of the converter of the Hammerland into the table radio. Yeah, just the antenna to get a little more gain. Now many in calling for this will change. Fuel mileage calculations will be altered, and I firmly believe that our fans will be treated to outstanding. So this proves that the uh, converter and uh, oscillator stages of this are working like they should. Here's the schematic, and. I have to try and see where I actually, and see if I can get the camera to, I don't know if the camera will want to lock onto it here, but I'll have to try and remember where I found this. It took some searching to try to find it. But here's the first IF transformer, and it's got two IF transformers in one, like you can see uh, here. The bottom part, I guess is just an inductor, the bottom part is for 455 kilohertz and it passes down through the top one. It's just kind of like an AM and FM IF set up in a, a table radio but in this case two IF frequencies are used. The higher IF frequency of uh, 3035 kilohertz is used uh, it's used for the higher shortwave bands and for the lower shortwave bands and the broadcast band, 455 kilohertz is used, just like on a regular table radio. So the 3035 kilohertz IF signal goes up into this part of the can, goes through this crystal circuit, and then into this coil, and then it goes over here to the uh, second converter. It's called, it says first converter, but I'd call it the second converter because this then converts that 3035 kilohertz IF and it uses a 2.58 megahertz crystal for the oscillator so they end up with 455 going out into this transformer but then for the uh, 455 kilohertz IF it just passes through this top part and then goes down into this bottom part here it comes out here and it goes through a 2 picofarad capacitor into the uh, first 455 kilohertz IF amplifier 
and the plate of that IF is connected to the plate of the converter. So no matter which of these is providing the 455 kilohertz signal, either the IF amp or the second converter, they both go into the uh, they both go into this this stage here, this IF can go to another 455 kilohertz IF amp and then I think they go to a uh, another converter where they get converted to 60 kilohertz for the uh, the final IF stage in, the, in this are 60 kilohertz so it's triple conversion for the highest bands double conversion for the lower bands but this proves that this part of the circuit is working the first converter oscillator and RF in this IF can and it's going to be complex to solder it all back together and this this helps narrow down the trouble to further down the circuit I'm going to have to try to take this band switch unit off of here which is going to be a lot of work but I have a feeling one of the bad IF cans is in here somewhere there's a couple of IF cans that look a little different from the other ones so I'm hoping those are the ones with the bad mica in them and if we look I think I have to order some 330 PF capacitors and see if we can look down at the next the next part of the circuit here let's see here here it is so it goes into a somewhere there's another converter in this I I'm not sure somewhere there's another converter to convert it from 455 kilohertz to there it is so it goes to a, a 455 kilohertz amp into another IF can and then yet a third IF can and yet another one then it goes to another converter to convert it to 60 kilohertz and then these IF cans look like they just got one cap in them so hopefully we'll just see I'm thinking the problem is probably in these cans here and they look like they got 330 of farad caps in them so that's where I'll, I'll try to work on next but this is certainly encouraging that that the front end stages of this are working correctly